Okay, hi guys, welcome back to QBT. Uh, and in this video, we're kind of bringing our forces series to an end uh, with Newton's three laws. The reason that we're doing this at the end is because there's other videos that you guys can watch that we've already made that will help you understand these laws better. We've got one video on force and how it's equal to mass times acceleration, uh, which is Newton's second law, which we'll talk about in, in a little bit. Um, and we also did a video on resultant forces, which will help you understand Newton's first law a little bit more. But without further ado, I'm gonna use this to um, help you guys understand Newton's three laws. So let's begin with the first law. The first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by another force. Right? Unless acted on by a resultant force. So the ball is completely happy to move, right? Unless it's acted on by another force. In which, in this case, Steve stopped the ball. Right? Um, and a good way to think about this is um, how two objects will fall at the same rate in a vacuum. Because there's no air resistance. You look it up. You can go online. You can see that a bowling ball falls at the same rate as a feather in a vacuum, right? Because there's no resultant force on those objects. They're both subject to weight due to gravity, right? So that's Newton's first law, okay? That an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a resultant force. Right? Let's move on. Let's move on to the second law, uh, which we've already covered in another video, and that's how force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so the acceleration that an object feels is subject to the force that I exert on it, right? So if I throw this very gently, it accelerates um, at a slower rate than it would if I threw it with, with a lot of force, right? It would also go further. Um, and obviously this relationship is also dependent on mass, right? Because if I provide the same force to an extremely heavy object, it will not move as far as if I were to provide the same force to a much lighter object. Okay? So the relationship between force and acceleration is proportionate. And that's Newton's second law. Not complicated. But guys, do check out the video that we did on that equation. It's linked in the description below. We talk about how we can use the equation and how we can actually calculate things with it. For now, let's move on to Newton's third and final law which is like this, I suppose, it's right? Um, it's that every force has an equal and opposite reaction force, right? So the reason that I dropped the ball was to show you that it bounces back, right? It doesn't bounce back to the same height because energy is lost due to sound, right? Okay, and obviously other energy sources are lost. There's elastic potential energy being dissipated, um, lots of things that we'll go into in a bit more detail later. Effectively, the reason that this ball stays on the table is because it's experiencing an equal and opposite reaction force from the table, right? The reason that when you're walking, when you're standing on the ground, the reason that you're able to do that is because you are experiencing an equal and opposite reaction force from gravity, right? You're being weighed down by gravity and the Earth is almost pushing back up. So, yeah, that's the third law. Every force has an equal and opposite reaction force. Okay, so I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I hope it helped you understand Newton's three laws in a bit more detail. Um, please like and subscribe. You know, it really helps us to uh, grow the channel and to get more information to you guys. Um, and if you have any suggestions about what you would like to see in the future, then just post it in the comments below and we'll get back to you on that. But yeah, in the meantime, hope you enjoyed and uh, see you next time. Bye guys.